it's been a long road that's, that's led me here. Um, and one of the things that I really want to say today, firstly that um, some of my school friends might be very surprised that I've ended up here, working in the uh, countryside of Wiltshire. But secondly, that what's dr drawn me to the farm that I work at, this wonderful project, Jamie's Farm down the road in Box, is exactly the kind of support that we give the kids week in, week out. I've narrowed it down to kind of four things for this talk. It's about great people working in a beautiful place with a sense of purpose and with a, a profound sense of positivity running throughout it. And so this is Jamie's farm, how it is, just down there in Box. We welcome 10 young people a week to our farm. And I think it's very important for me just to start off by saying, why should we be bothered? Why should we be bothered with disadvantaged young people? Why should we be bothered here in Bath about disadvantaged young people in our community, about disadvantaged young people from London, Birmingham, wherever they might come from? And the fact is, firstly, if you really want to look at it that way, if we don't, then at some point it's going to lead to some financial cost to us. We can't just write off a whole section of our society. Forgetting any moral obligation, actually it would just cost us a lot more in terms of the health system, in terms of the welfare benefits that they might end up receiving, in terms of ending up in the youth justice system. And for us, the shame of walking alongside on the other side of the road when we see young people in that position should be enough to instigate us to do something about it early enough for us to do something about it. Secondly, I'd say, and this is the thing that's affecting me the most at the moment, if we don't, who will? At the moment, politicians are thinking so carefully about the very small number of people in a small number of constituencies who may or may not vote for them that they're ignoring the general population. It's not about public opinion, it's about the opinion of those few people. Disadvantaged young people don't vote. Older disadvantaged people are unlikely to vote. And so policies have set up, been set up year on year that aren't to support them. Thirdly, I think as was touched on, particularly in the Jonathan Sachs TED talk that we heard earlier, there are certain problems affecting society at the moment that are uniquely difficult for young people. There's something around the loss of community and feeling alone in this world when we're all supposed to be together that really affects the kids who we see on a daily basis. They don't sense that they've got role models around them who are going to give them the support and guidance that they need. They don't sense that there's a, sen a sense of belonging in their community so that they can contribute in some meaningful way. They don't know that they might have a job that they can walk into when they leave school. They have that fear around that. And secondly, they also don't have the stable, secure, loving background at home, particularly in those disadvantaged communities, that many of us from more affluent backgrounds would take for granted. The fact that they don't get that good enough parenting means that they don't feel that they're lovable. It means also that they don't end up being able to love, and they're not able to form the kind of positive relationships later in life that are so important if they're going to be successful. And that's something that we really try in Jamie's Farm to do something about. And I suppose how you're asking, now you're asking, why farming? What is it about farming that, that actually makes a difference? And that image like that kind of sums it up a little bit. Um, again, if you've tried to move a herd of sheep by yourself, if you haven't got a dog, it's not very easy. And so the first thing I'd say that one of the really positive things about farming is you need to work well as a team if you're going to be successful. And so you immediately are feeling part of a community, working together for a common purpose. Secondly, there's something about farming that is fun, that is enjoyable, that's engaging. You can see on the smiles on the young people and the older people there that there's something that really engages them and makes them want to do it. And it's so different from lots of the lives that the kids in the inner city might experience. And thirdly, and this has been reported on widely, young vulnerable people, when they're trying to build relationships or trying to support animals, are able to do it in a way that they're not able to do when they're dealing with adults. Adults have let them down. Adults have broken their trust in a way that animals, and actually younger young, young people, younger children haven't. And so these kind of kids, who are often very aggressive, very prickly, have very strong defense me mechanisms in school, when they get to a place like ours, are allowed to soften when they're working with the animals. They're able to show a nurturing side to themselves that otherwise they've never had the chance to show. They're able to be, if I'm honest, their true so selves and to show the goodness within. And that's something that's really profound to see. And the other thing, as I was saying, 
is there's something around these four P's that I'm going to really talk about. People, working with good people who care about them in a way that often they've never experienced before. The adults who work at Jamie's Farm give way beyond just a kind of nine to five. They welcome these kids with open arms. They don't see them as the, the ASBO wielding yobs that they're often presented to be in the media. They don't have a label attached to them. They sense they're good. And when they work with them, they bring a sense of joy, they bring a sense of collaboration, and a sense of, of welcome and care that often they don't get. And you can see they might be doing mucky jobs, um, but they're willing to do it because they're willing to work alongside us. There's a few little <laughs> smiles there. And that sense of family, all eating around the same table, is again something that they don't get to experience enough. There's something that we need to do something about. It's not always happy times, but even when you're dealing with some of the challenging moments, for them to know that they've got someone willing to put an arm over their shoulder and support them and to talk through their issues, it's really profound. Second thing I talk about is place. Now, you look at an image like that, and that's from our farm up in Herefordshire. Young people who we work with from the inner city, they're not used to having a view like that. And I genuinely think there's something enclosing about not having a perspective like that. They literally don't have horizons to dream big. When you're able to go on a walk like that and see an expanse and see the potential and possibility around you, it's profoundly affecting. And there's a beauty about being in nature. And there's a freedom about being in the countryside where you can run through fields and feel safe and feel secure. And there's something around purpose. Some of the things that the kids say when they're on the farm is that by the end of breakfast, They've achieved more on the farm by being out there, feeding the animals and mucking them out. Again, pretty grim job if you've ever had to muck out a pig shed at 7.30 in the morning. They've achieved more, and they're more proud of themselves by breakfast than they will be after a whole week in school. Because there are kids who often are, are, are led into situations where they're not feeling successful. That's not good enough. That's something that we should be doing much more about. All of the kids are, are getting stuck in. They're doing the jobs themselves. They're not just watching other people do it. And they're working alongside us, given the trust, where we actually say to them, you can do this. Even with axes. And there's something, as I was saying, about positivity. There was a lot said um, when there was a big movement a few years ago around character-building education that you know, grit, resilience, self-esteem, they're all more important predicators of a, of a young person's success in later life than exam results. And one of the things they talked about was optimism, and I kind of thought to myself, how on earth do you teach a young person to be optimistic, to be positive, to see their glass as half full rather than half empty? Because we all know, if you want to have that can-do spirit, and as Philip said earlier, say yes to things, seize opportunities, then you need to have that optimism that it's not going to be a disaster when you do. And the only thing that I could come across was a sense that these young people, they're around, and they're around for understandable reasons, people from broken homes who actually aren't feeling optimistic and positive themselves. And they're not able to be people who see the glass as half full because they've been let down so much in their own lives. And so the only way that we're going to change this is by surrounding people and changing that culture of positivity. And at Jamie's Farm, that's the first thing the kids notice. And when we ask them, who should we recruit for our next position, they say, positivity. That's what you want. Someone who sees the life as full of potential and sees us as full of potential. And you can see in the joy that these young people experience that they feel that positivity. Now, I want to talk about a young person called Jack. So Jack's a local lad. He's been through an incredibly traumatic experience. He suffered huge... And, and really um, affecting bereavement that end, meant that he ended up in the social services system as a looked-after child. And he came to Jamie's farm a few years in a row. Fortunately, Baines has set up a system through an organization called R2K where they afford to send, us for, send these kids to, for respite care to us year on year. And when he writes about the effect that Jamie's farm has had on him, he says, when I came, I was completely limited. I was inhibited. I didn't believe in myself in any way. I was disengaged from school. He said, the way that Jamie's farm treated me 
as a member of their family, giving me these opportunities and showing me the potential in life, meant that I felt I could just be. Be me. There was a peace and calm in that beautiful countryside that meant I worked out who I was and what I could be. And the thing that, that affects me most, I mean, I see him every year and I see the joyful personality that he is and it, and it really inspires me. But when I heard at the end of the last trip um, in September, he said, you know what? Because of what Jamie's farm has given to me, I've decided to go into school and give some of the disadvantaged kids in my school some of what I've, given, what I've got from Jamie's farm. Now, for him, his passion is film. His passion is film, and he set up a film club, and he targets specifically the vulnerable young people in his school. And the reason is, he feels, from working with them, that he gets some of exactly what he got at Jamie's farm, and he's able to spread that to new people as well. He gets the place, he gets the positivity, he gets the purpose, and he gets to work with great people. And the thing I want to end with is just by imploring some of you guys in the audience around this question. He won't thank me for some of these photos, but no. <laughs> particularly, particularly that one. <laughs> um, this is me a couple of years ago working with a group of young people from East London. Um, I know I've taken a huge amount from working in this way. I've felt that sense of reward, that sense of satisfaction. It means that I almost can't feel that I can go anywhere else because of the, the, the kind of culture that we've created there that is so affecting people who come, but is also so stimulating and rewarding for, for us as staff being there. In your lives, please look at how you are achieving those four Ps. How are you surrounding yourself by good people? How are you working in beautiful places? How are you working with a real sense of purpose? And how are you acting with positivity? And if you need a purpose, just think about some more of those looked after kids. Looked after kids, the educational outcomes are horrendous, horrendous. They're more likely to go to prison than go to university. And if there's a way that you can find in, in your purpose, in your sense of purpose, a way that can contribute potentially through some of the wonderful projects that we've heard talked about today, then I can assure you, because I felt it, you will get such sense of fulfillment that will leave you a much happier and, and, and much better off person in the long run. Thank you very much. Yeah.